Parliament on the status of the Say No to Illegal Logging Initiative recently launched by the Ministry. Thank you. Honourable Members, I am Malayan, the Attorney General and Minister for Economy, Civil Service, Communications, Housing and Community Development, the Honourable Ayah Said Kaim, to respond accordingly. Honourable Minister, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm answering this question on behalf of the Honourable Prime Minister, who's got an engagement in Sirua. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, illegal logging is a major problem across the world uh, and in all types of forests. It has serious negative impacts on the environment and forest ecosystems, communities, and indeed economies. It undermines the legitimacy of the forest sector and hinders efforts to implement sustainable forest management. It also depresses the market value of timber while disadvantaging those companies that engage in legal and sustainable logging and trade. It is a huge disadvantage to the majority of the landowning communities as well. The United Nations, Mr. Speaker, so estimates that illegal logging costs the global community up to US $206 billion each year. This makes it one of the largest environmental crimes by economic value in the world today. Fiji, of course, Mr. Speaker, sir, is not immune to illegal logging and the trade of illegally logged timber. In Vanuatu, for example, sir, alone, a total of 29 cases were recorded from January 2017 to January 2022. The most common illegal logging practices in Fiji include, one, harvesting, transportation, purchase, or sale of timber in contravention or violation of national laws, such as the Forest Act, Environment Management Act, and the Ethiopia Land Trust Act, among others. Two, extraction of CITES listed species, deliberately encroaching into forests adjacent to licensed logging areas, logging in protected areas such as forest reserves, logging in prohibited areas such as steep slopes, riverbanks, and catchment areas, including buffers, and removing undersized trees. Three, falsifying declarations of volume or species harvested, as well as export documentations, transporting logs without truck passes or outdated truck passes, ignoring waste disposal and environment impact assessment screening processes, and operating sawmills without valid licenses. And four, sir, dishonest practices resulting in only a few benefiting from the forestry deals at the expense of the majority of the landowning units. And we saw that quite significantly, Honorable Bulanuda would know about this. A lot of illegal logging took place in the days before the mahogany industry was actually regulated. Mr. Speaker, sir, to curb illegal logging and to help enforce our national laws and regulations, the Ministry of Forestry formalized partnerships through memorandums of understanding with agencies like the Fiji Revenue Customs Service, Fiji Bureau of Statistics, Fiji National Provident Fund, Ministry of Employment, Productivity, Industrial Relations, and the Fiji Police Force. It is working very closely with the Ministry of Environment to ensure that licenses for logging, saw milling, and treatment plants are issued only after an assessment has been conducted on the environmental impacts, and the Ministry of Environment has approved either the environmental management plan or the more detailed environment impact assessment. The Ministry is also strengthening its relations with the Ethiopia Land Trust Board, especially to clearly identify not only the genuine landowners, but also the the, to make sure the majority of them, at least 60% of them, have agreed to the harvesting of trees from their respective lands. The latest development of TLTB is the sharing of access to the online harvesting licensing system, which Mr. Speaker said the Honourable Prime Minister had the privilege of launching three weeks ago. This will help expedite our business facilitation processes also. Mr. Speaker, so all of these partnerships aim to uh, form a for formidable front to cut down illegal forest activities, ensure that forest-based companies provide appropriate safety working conditions for their staff, pay their staff the correct wages in FNPF, and also pay the correct amount of taxes. Importantly, sir, it aims to strengthen our efforts to protect the environment as a way to address climate change, as any environmental damage caused by hastily and poorly planned operations can be irreparable. The partnerships will also help ensure that fair compensation is provided to the resource owners through correct and timely royalty and stumpage payments and, where appropriate, lease payments. <coughs> Additionally, the partnerships will ensure that the total contribution of the forestry sector is accurately measured and reflected in the country's GDP. The Ministry also, Mr. Speaker, still launched the Say to No Illegal Logging Pledge in Lambasa on the 11th of February 2022. The aim is to create greater public awareness and to gather support from as many stakeholders as possible to curb illegal logging. Close to 300 individuals, Mr. Speaker, sir, have signed up to the pledge since its launch. These include farmers, landowning units, licensed loggers, government officials, of course, and private companies. 68% of the pledges, Mr. Speaker, sir, have actually come from the landowning units. 
and we expect the momentum to increase as we continue to conduct awareness through the Tikina and provincial meetings, one of which our Honourable Prime Minister is attending today, through our ongoing discussions with the members of the timber industry, through increasing media awareness, and also right here, of course, in Parliament, sir. The pledge is being piloted in Banu Levu before it is implemented in Viti Levu and other areas. The Speaker said the Ministry is also in discussions with the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption, where a number of illegal logging cases have been filed to also strengthen partnership, including running the Say to No Illegal Logging, Mr. Speaker, sir, pledge, which is the pledge, in parallel with FICEX, I don't accept bribes campaign. <coughs> the Ministry is building the capacity of its staff, Mr. Speaker, sir, and we wish to thank both FICEX and the DPP for the training opportunities they have provided and are providing to the forestry staff on investigations and prosecution processes. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, we would like all members to actually support this uh, Say No to Illegal Logging Pledge, which is critically important for us, as I'm sure that uh, we all would agree that uh, we need to protect our forests. If the forest is going to be harvested, we need to be able to show it's done in a sustainable manner. We need to also protect indigenous species. The Ministry of Forestry, of course, started a nursery on the indigenous species. And also, Mr. Speaker, sir, we also need to look at forestry in a very different manner, which is that currently our way of valuing forestry is only when it's cut down and that contributes to GDP. But as highlighted in the Climate Change Act, sir, we can have actually GDP contribution by the forestry sector by keeping the trees in the ground through carbon trading. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I thank the Honourable Minister. We'll move on to the next oral question for today, to the sixth oral question.